Welcome back. Okay, so we're talking about the SVD, and now I want to tell you one of the most useful interpretations of the SVD in terms of correlations among the columns of X and correlations among the rows of X. So this is SVD and the interpretation in terms of correlations. Okay, good. So essentially, you can think of the U and the V matrices from this SVD as eigenvectors of a correlation matrix given by X times X transpose or X transpose times X. Okay, uh, and I want to guess. I want to actually show you what I mean by this correlation matrix uh, over here for a minute. So if I have a correlation matrix X transpose times X. And again, let's say X is a tall, skinny matrix uh, where the columns mean something, like they're each faces. Then X transpose X essentially looks like a short, fat matrix. This is X transpose times a tall, skinny matrix. And I'm going to hopefully I have enough room to draw this. This would be X1 transpose. This would be X2 transpose. That's the rows of this transpose matrix, dot, dot, dot. And then the columns of this would be X1 column vector, X2 column vector, dot, 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 dot. Okay, so that's what X transpose X is. Uh, and this is essentially a correlation matrix among the columns of X. Okay, now it's important to note this is an M by N matrix and this is an N by M. So uh, M, N, N, and M. And so this correlation matrix here is a little M by M matrix. So this is actually generally much, much smaller uh, than X if M is a lot smaller than N. Okay. And the way you can think about this correlation matrix, the first element, the first element of this M by M matrix, you get by taking this row vector times this column vector. So it's just X1 transpose X1. Okay, so that's uh, this equals, there's x1 transpose x1. And as I, if I stay in this column and I go down and I make x2 transpose times x1, that's the second entry, is x2 transpose times x1, dot, 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 all the way down to xm transpose x1. So that's the first column of this correlation matrix are all of these row vectors times the x1 column. Okay, the second column will be again x1 transpose, but now times this x2 vector, times x2, x2 transpose times x2, dot dot dot, down to xm transpose x2, and then the last, you, so on and so forth, and then the last column is eventually x1 transpose times xm, x2 transpose times xm, dot dot dot, to xm transpose xm. And so every entry in this uh, m by m correlation matrix is essentially an inner product between two columns of the matrix x. That's all that x transpose uh, x i transpose x j is just the inner product of the ith and the jth vectors, okay? And what that means is that every entry of this matrix is just the inner product of two columns, of the corresponding two columns of your data matrix X. And so, for example, if these are people's faces, then the I jth entry of this matrix is the inner product between person I and person J's face, okay? And what's interesting is if there is a value of this matrix that is large, that means that those two people had a large inner product. Their faces are similar. They have the same basic face structure. If you have a small value of this inner product, that means that they're nearly orthogonal. They're very different faces. And so this small M by M matrix contains all of that inner product information between every column of your data matrix X with every other column. Now, because this matrix uh, is symmetric and positive semi-definite because these are inner products, uh, essentially that guarantees that we're going to have uh, non-negative real eigenvalues, and those are going to have a direct correspondence on these singular values sigma. Okay, So this is the meaning of a correlation matrix. Let's just label this. Uh, this is our correlation matrix. Okay, good. Uh, and we're going to compute 
u and sigma and v as the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of these correlation matrices. So I find this to be really, really useful and interesting. Okay, so let's let's actually compute this. Let's say I have um, x. Uh, which one do I want to compute first? I think I'm going to compute uh, x transpose x first. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume that x is equal to this economy-sized SVD, and we're going to plug it in every time we see an x. Okay, and I should point out that if uh, if x equals u sigma v transpose, then x transpose, the way you transpose a product of matrix is you flip all of the order. So now it's v sigma u, and you transpose each of those matrices. So I flip the order. v transpose transpose is just v. Sigma transpose is just sigma because it's already diagonal. So transposing doesn't do anything. And then u transpose. Uh, and these are hats. The sigma and the u's are the economy SVD hats. Okay, so that's x and that's x transpose, and we're going to just plug them in here. Okay, so x transpose again is v sigma hat u hat transpose times x is going to be u hat sigma hat v transpose. Good. Uh, and here's where it gets interesting. So u hat transpose u is the identity matrix. This is a little uh, R, m by m identity matrix. And so what we get out of this whole product is that this equals v sigma hat squared v transpose. Okay. Now, I hope you recognize this. So what we've done is we've taken x transpose x. We've assumed that there is something called a singular value decomposition in terms of these orthonormal matrices u and v and this diagonal matrix sigma. We've just assumed that. And when we plug that in, some things cancel out, and this is the expression we get. Now, what is really interesting, this is the expression for an eigenvalue decomposition of this matrix. So essentially, um, this is the eigen decomposition of this correlation matrix. Or if you want, what we can write, uh, we can multiply both sides by V to cancel this guy out. And we get X transpose X times V equals V sigma hat squared. Okay. And so what we have here is that these sigma hat squareds, these are the eigenvalues of this correlation matrix. And these v's are the eigenvectors of this correlation matrix. Okay, So that is the real intuitive inter uh, interpretation of the singular value decomposition. The, the v matrix from the singular value decomposition, these right singular vectors in v, are just eigenvectors of the column-wise correlation matrix. They're just eigenvectors of the column-wise correlation matrix. And sigma are the square roots of the eigenvalues of that same column-wise correlation matrix. Okay, So it's a really, really nice interpretation. This means something. This correlation matrix is very interpretable in terms of like the inner products uh, of, of the, the data itself, the columns of the data. And the eigenvalues and eigenvectors give me uh, the, the sigmas and the v's. Good. And we can do the same thing with the uh, transpose version of this. So let's say now I take x, uh, x transpose. And similarly, I'm going to write that as u hat sigma hat v transpose times its transpose, which is v sigma hat u hat transpose. Again, uh, this cancels out and becomes the identity. And I have this equals now u hat sigma hat squared u hat transpose. Okay, And again, I can write that in terms of the eigen decomposition of this other row-wise correlation matrix x, x transpose times u hat equals u hat times sigma hat squared again. So again, in fact, these sigma squareds are the exact same eigenvalues as above. And now these are my, my left singular vectors, are my eigenvectors of this row-wise correlation matrix. 
Okay. Now this row-wise correlation matrix is massive. This was a little M by M matrix. This is a N by N huge, huge matrix. So you don't actually want to compute this thing in general. Okay. In fact, generally you don't actually want to compute U and sigma and V using these eigen decompositions of these correlation matrices. Uh, it's very inefficient. It's not very accurate. There's many, many more efficient and accurate ways of computing the SVD, for example, based on the QR factorization. But I'm showing you this because it is the most intuitive way to understand what these, uh, what these, these matrices actually mean. So the columns of U are eigenvectors of a correlation matrix, and the columns of V are the eigenvectors of another correlation matrix. And to some extent, they are the most correlated. The, the first column, U1, is the largest eigenvector that is most correlated uh, with, with the data, with the column space of the data. The second column is the next most important eigenvector, and the next, and the next, and the next. And their importance is quantified by the eigenvalues sigma hat squared. Very, very cool interpretation. Um, I really like to think about SVD in this way. It's not how you compute the SVD, but it's how I interpret the SVD. Okay, thank you.